<laughs> Good morning everyone, how are you? Oh my goodness, it was supposed to be cooler today. I've just arrived in the garden. I'm boiling hot already. Got the window open, trying to get a bit of a breeze through. <coughs> the sun is high already and it's hot. But what's supposed to happen today is that we get a load of cloud cover and it's a bit cooler. So I planned my day for this day um, in the garden because there's so many little jobs that need doing. Um, just really <laughs> struggling with this heat. Oh my goodness, speaking of which, I need some water already. I'm sure there are loads of you who are in a very similar situation. It's beautiful. I love the blue sky. I love the brightness. I love warmth. But I'm just not built for heat. And I don't think many of us in England are, or the UK. Um, we're used to um, a summer day being, oh, 21 degrees. Lovely, perfect. Stick your shorts on, stick a top on, off you go and get on with your day. But this sort of 28, 29, 30, day after day after day, Anyway, that's my kind of way of sort of saying I really, really haven't been attending to the garden very much at all. So obviously you saw the last couple of videos I had that morning a few days ago where I got the brassicas in, the onions out, brassicas in, harvested some flowers. And because my appointment had been cancelled, I thought, oh great, got a nice chunk of time on what was supposed to be a cool day. But my goodness, it got so hot and I have to be sensible. I know what my limits are and I know that if I stay out in the heat too long I just end up with a thumping migraine. Oh, absolute bane of my life these migraines. So there are loads of bits to do. Got my list as always. Um, that morning that I was here I just quickly went around the garden thinking like what needs what needs doing, what's a priority. So today two of my main things to do is some tomato care because by now, normally, I would have my beautiful teepees over the tomatoes. They'd be getting trained, um, all my pinching and my foliage, etc, etc. But this year, my tomato beds are a shambles. I haven't been able to put the teepees up because I cannot get sticks into the ground because it's, it's been baked hard since May. It's ridiculous. So I haven't put the teepees up. Some of them, I don't know whether they're cordons or bush anyway. But also I haven't done things like trimming back my foliage, um, I need to do an aspirin spray today which I'll explain when I come to it. So yeah, a bunch of tomato care today and just hoping, hoping, hoping it doesn't get too hot so that I can get all that done. A little bit of care for the beans. I've got my spray. Is it going to work? Oh no, I'm spraying it towards the poppies on the bench next to me. So the Beans, the, the climbing beans this is, they've been really slow to get going, really slow, apart from the gigantes. Um, there have been quite a lot of flowers and then the pods haven't been setting. But I read somewhere recently that it's partly because it's because we've been so dry. So that to give the flowers a misting to help them set their pods, I don't actually understand how that's going to work. But anyway... This is just plain water at the moment, so I'll do the beans first and then I'll put some aspirin in here and go and do the tomatoes. What else is on the list? Oh, all sorts of little jobs, but also some harvesting today. Suddenly, all my rock and core beans are ready. They're all ready, all in one go. So I'll get those out today. There's loads on this list. So, without further ado, Let's get in the garden and let's get doing some work. Oh, and let's play with the tomatoes. That smell is going to be gorgeous. Yay, come on. You know, considering it's been a bit of a rubbish year for the beans, and um, oh, I've got them in my hair. Um, I am pleased that these arches are starting to fill up. Yay. Oh, such a lovely sight. The one over there, not so much so. And we've got this beautiful breeze today as well. So, like I said, I don't know why this is supposed to work, or how it's supposed to work, but I've read that it does. 
so I'm just going to mist away. Have you, any of you tried this? Did it work? Does it work? Oh, I don't want to squirt you guys. Oh, there are, I do have some beans. I don't know, can you see? Can you see that? So there are some developing. The thing is, if you're growing Gigantes this year and it's your first year, don't be surprised at the size of the pods. They'll get big and fat, but quite short. What I found last year was that I got me, most pods had two beans in, occasionally three, occasionally one, but mostly two. So, um, yeah, don't worry that they're not really long, like, say, you're accustomed to seeing with a runner bean or such a thing. Yeah, a few more pods forming here. <laughs> Yay! I think considering how dry it's been, then I had that sudden black flight infestation which I've never had in beans before. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna please for every single little bean I get this year. Misty, misty, misty. <laughs> I'm going to crack on with this. The other thing is, if any of you have tried it before, do you know if it's better to do it in the morning or in the evening? I'm doing it in the morning, obviously, as you can see. I don't know if it's going to make any difference, but let's face it, at the moment we'll try anything, eh? Gosh, I'm mighty glad of this little breeze today. Oh, it's lovely. It is getting hot though, never mind. Right, so next job is to um, spray the tomato foliage. So I've got myself, what's in that? About a litre of water. And then some dispersible, soluble aspirin. And I'm gonna give it 300 milligrams, which is one tablet. if I can get it out. Not, not a bad idea to keep some aspirin on the plot anyway because then I'm um, just scared of someone having a heart attack. Give them an aspirin. Uh, not recommended. CPR only. Right, so I'm just going to let that dissolve away. So the, the idea behind it is that um, spraying the leaves with this... Oh no! <laughs> Oh, was my spray gone? Oh, fiddlesticks, I might have to buy a new spritzer. Anyway, the idea with um, this aspirin foliar spray is that it, it stimulates the tomato plant to, how to put it, produce almost an immunological response that just makes it sort of stronger and more robust to have it ward. Um, ward off the blight so it doesn't work as a cure it doesn't prevent it entirely but what i found because i've been doing this now for the last i think 
three years, so this will be my fourth year of doing it, is what I found, my tomatoes, we get blight, the pots all surrounding me have got blight, but I seem to get it about four weeks later, which is really, really, really handy because generally, when I think back to before I did this, the, the blight would come and maybe I'd have half of my tomatoes were red and the other half were green before they even had a chance to ripen, boom, blight. Those extra four weeks I seem to get are just long enough to get half of those remaining green ones ripened. It just prolongs the harvest for me. And of course, I do remove the green ones and take them home, sit them in the windowsill and quite often they ripen that way. Um, but yes, so I've been doing it for a couple of years now. And like I say, it seems to work for me in order, it, in so much as that it buys me a bit of time late in the season when the blight comes. So, <laughs> and it, oh, oh, it is working. There we go. So I'm gonna, oh, did you get a spray? I just saw the spray drift across. <laughs> So I'm going to get the foliage sprayed, but before I do that, I'm going to trim some of the foliage back and I'll explain why as I'm doing it. I think it's clear to see what a crazy tangled mess the tomatoes are in this year for A, a bit of a lack of care on my part and B, because I don't know whether they're bushes or cordons. Anyway, so part of today's care I will do some more staking and tying later I don't know about staking because I don't think I can get anything in the ground but certainly some tying because they're all over the place but one of the main things going to do today is to just start to remove a bit of the foliage and at this stage obviously there's no blight so it can all go straight into the compost the idea with getting rid of some of the foliage is it's, it's a lot to do with air circulation. So, the thing about blight is it loves warm, moist conditions. Now, obviously, at the moment, we have the warmth. <laughs> oh, do I take that one out? Yes, I think I will. We have the warmth, but we don't have the moisture, thank goodness. Well, thank goodness, although it'd be really great to get some rain. So, if we were warm and wet, we were getting rain, the last thing I want is for the rain to just sit, sit, sit and stagnate on the leaves because that's an invitation to the blight to come in. So, removing a bit of the foliage is going to help with that, as in less foliage for the water to sit on, but also it's going to create more space through and around the plant so that the air can move around um, and therefore if they do get wet they will hopefully dry more quickly therefore reduce that chance again for the blight to get in and take hold it, it should also or I should say I should also mention that when you are watering your tomatoes don't water the foliage um, yeah wet foliage is basically a recipe for blight. Um, I don't strip all the leaves by any means because the plant still needs some leaves for it uh, to photosynthesize, to make its energy. But quite often what I'll do is anything, any foliage below the first truss of fruit I'll take off and then foliage up above I'll take out alternate ones or I'll maybe just say snip half into a leaf like that. The bottom line is I'm trying to create more air circulation, less, um, less surface area for moisture to sit on, less chance hopefully for the blight to take hold because it will come, it is inevitable. It's just one of those things with growing outdoor tomatoes. You just have to accept it and get on with it and then do as much as you can to help sort of delay it and accept that you're not gonna actually prevent it, but just hopefully delay it and reduce the impact when it does come. Right, 
I'm going to clip all this foliage out and then I'm going to give everything a spray with the aspirin. Also, because there isn't blight at the moment, thank goodness, I am safe to compost all my clippings. I think it might be time to go and have a nice glass of water in the shade of the shed and give Rusty a cuddle because he's just turned up. What a beautiful day. Where the beans seem to be struggling in this weather, the squash seem to be loving it. They've got absolutely rampant. So it's time to get a few more ties on. But I'm running out of string. Oh, it's slightly annoying. And also string for tying up tomatoes. But look at this. I mean, it's... Oh, we're nearly at the top of the teepee. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, it's been great. Stop there a second. I think... I think I will do things slightly differently next year. I've got the underplantings going sooner <laughs> because the squash have taken over. And actually, underneath this lot, the spinach have all pretty much gone over by now. Um, they've gone to seed. So I'll have them out. They'll be pretty big tough leaves which I won't like for having raw in salad but they'll be great for cooking with in the winter for soups so I'll have them out harvest the leaves and then re-sow if I can find some space under there yeah I'm definitely gonna have a vegetable cathedral next year again with maybe a few tweaks <laughs> Teeny, teeny, tiny fellow right on the end here. Actually, I'll, I'll give you a closer look in a second so you can see all the fruits. Can you hear me over there? <laughs> right, that's one done. Got another one that's gone all the way over there. Yeah, is this one gonna be? Oh my goody goodness. Oh my goody goodness. I think what I'm going to do with this one is actually get it up onto the bean poles because there's no beans growing there at the moment. Well, struggling, the swassel. Yeah, let's do that. You can really tell actually by how out of control all these bits are that just how little actual gardening I've been doing. Like I say, it's, oh, it's rooted itself. It's just been so much um, just trying to get here to water. And if I can water, I'm grateful. Um, yeah, what a peculiar year. What a very, very peculiar year. But like I say, these, um, the squash seem to be loving it. 
so if nothing else I'll be having a lot of um, squash this winter oh my goodness it's a monster right that's I think we can get this one going up here on one of the flying buttresses It's just sod's law, isn't it, that I'm running out of string today. Never mind. It's a good excuse to come back to the garden in a couple of days and do a bit more. Right. You climb up there, my beauty. I don't know how much of this you can make out because it's just a mass of foliage, isn't it? Oh, that one is right in the middle. Oh, my giddy goodness. They really have made a jungle. Okay. Let me see if I can give you some closer shots so you can actually see the veggies forming. Yay! So this one is the Galle de Sea. And wow, it really has turned into a monster. But in here, there's one forming. Looks perfectly healthy happy with that and then up, 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 up we go another one forming there and I did see a couple oh, around this side the other day where have they gone I think one of the things I love about squash is so often the harvest is a surprise because everything's been um, they've all been covered in foliage for so long half the time you don't don't know that they're there. I can't find it. There was definitely another big bertha around this side. No, nope, can't see it. Loads of flowers coming. They look like they're all male flowers there at the moment. But this, you see underneath the spinach, it's, oh, it's properly gone to seed. But like I said, every bit of leaf that I can have off there, I will. And I'll use it for soups in the winter as opposed to having it raw in my smoothies. Um, yeah, waste not, want not. Any more for any more in there? Oh, I can see a teeny, 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 tiny. Look, there's another one forming. Hurrah! And then, just swinging you round, these are the, oh, what have I got here? Violina. I need to get these tied up as well because it looks like they stop there. They don't. They're all flopped over and tangled up inside. But here's a beautiful little one for me. Oh, there's another one. Can I show it to you? There we go. Oh, you can get off. I don't know what you are. Um, like I say, half the time I don't know what's there. And then every now and again, say when I'm watering. Oh, just spotted one. I'll see another one. There we go. Oh, and there's, oh, there's quite a whopper in the middle there. Let me show you the whopper. Hello, whopper. You're going to be in my tummy by Christmas. <laughs> oh, and another. Actually, this one's doing pretty well, isn't it? Uh, it's trying, though. Look, it's trying to escape. It's making a run for it across the path. <laughs> and another one just here. Yes, I've got a lot of tying in and tying up to do. So that's the violina. And across on this one, there's... This is the sousrine. Big one there forming. Um, I haven't had a proper look in... Oh, yes. There's another little bitty baby. And... Such beautiful, aren't they just beautiful plants? The leaves, the foliage, the fruits as they're forming. Why wouldn't you want to grow masses and masses of squash in your garden? Now this one, I haven't looked in at all. This, this is the Carnival Mound. Look, I've got no path. This is where my path should be. I now have no path. And I haven't yet had a proper look in here. Oh, look. Get on with your work. Oh, happy days. 
Is that good nosh? Yeah. I hope so. I can't actually see from here if any of them... Excuse my voice getting funny, I'm bent double. <laughs> I can't... Oh, yeah, hang on a second. Just down here. There we go. So it is fruiting. Hoorah! Happy days. Right, I need to get on with doing a bit more tying up, don't I? And leave this beauty to go about her work. Oh, she's off. She's gone to a different bed. Excellent. Any over there? Oh, I'm going to go on a little hunt later on. <laughs> well, I've run out of string and my belly's rumbling. So I think I'm going to call it quits for now. Get myself some lunch and I think I'm going to have a little lie back here. <laughs> Put the radio on. I might even have a little snooze. The breeze is beautiful, but it is kind of warm. Look at my tomato hands. <laughs> Can you see? Green tomato hands. So yeah, that's that's been a nice little session this morning, looking after the beans and tomatoes. I never get as much done as I think I will, or I hope I will, but it doesn't matter. It's been lovely. If I manage to rouse myself from my nap, if I can find some more energy, I'll carry on, but that can wait for another day. So for now, I will say to you all, cheerio. I hope some of you at least are getting rain. I know there are parts of the UK that are now getting rain, but for the rest of us, gird your loins for another watering session tonight. <laughs> I will see you all really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, take care and watch your backs carrying all those watering cans. See you soon.